All right, so what I've done here is I've added a new project called Hello CRM, and this is just a blank app. Otherwise, what you're looking at here is the sample app that comes with the download from the CRM team and the two sample libraries. And notice, just like the sample app, I'm referring to these two libraries. Right. Similarly here, it refers to those two libraries. To download that app, you just go to the CRM blog and you look for this post titled Building Clients for Windows Phone and Windows 8 RT. And as I mentioned in the blog post, the code here, it's definitely not a hello world sample. And in fact, if you're just trying to figure things out, it can be a little bit confusing. Now there's a lot of good things in the sample code for the sample app that uses the sample libraries uh, that the CRM team has built in terms of you know making sure that this works with both Live ID, um, CRM Online under Office 365, and ADFS internet facing deployment. However, most people want to get started with a very simple example just to see how all this works. And so that's exactly what Hello CRM is all about. And then I've done some other things that I mentioned in the blog post, like show you how to have cleaner code by using the await and async keywords, as well as my example will actually use code generated from CRM service util with some modifications. And in turn, this will all be data binding friendly. All right, let's start by looking at how to get started. I'm gonna come into mainpage.xaml. And one of the things I wanna note about this sample is it is a very hello world sample, right? So unlike the sample the team shows you, I don't show you things like how to create a proper login page, uh, which you should absolutely obviously do. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hard code my username and password. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to do things like uh, persist the security token so that you can uh, reuse, uh, restart the application without having to, to re-log in. I'll talk about places where you're gonna to wanna to elaborate the code to do so, uh, but I'm keeping this very simple. So this isn't what your production code would look like, it's just to kind of get you to get, it's just to get you started so you understand how to use the API. And a couple tips and tricks to be more productive building Windows 8 applications with the API. So the first thing I do is on Navigated to, I make a call to service configuration factory dot create configuration with I organization service so that we actually get a, a config object or an organization service configuration object that we'll use to ultimately call the organization service. And notice I've created a field here so I can access it across different methods. Now the way that uh, create configuration works here, notice that it takes, here, let me do this. Notice that it takes a URI, which is right here, which points to the actual organization service, and then an event handler that you will wire up to handle when the creation config is, is completed. And so I've implemented my handler inline here using a Lambda. And notice what I'm doing here. Basically all I'm doing is saying once uh, the configuration is complete, go ahead and use the dispatcher to call run async and basically call this method right here, login and call organization service. And I use the dispatcher to ensure that this code is back on the UI thread. And then finally, I safely cast this to organization service configuration because create configuration returns an interface. All right, so let's take a look at what, what's actually going on here. This is really just sort of the setup code so we can actually do what we need to do. First thing we need to do is set up our credentials so we can log into the service. More importantly, what actually happens here is you log in once, and in this case, because I'm gonna be logging into Office 365, which uses claims-based authentication using Windows Azure Active Directory, what I actually wanna do is once I've authenticated to Windows Azure Active Directory, I just wanna keep passing the security token back to CRM's web service, All right? So the way that this works is you come up here and you new up authentication credentials. Um, you give it a username and a password, and this is my account name, and you can't see my password. It's over here off to the side of the screen. And then you call authenticate async. And notice how I'm using the await keyword, and this is an async method. 
Now, if you've actually looked at the sample, what you'll know is that there isn't an async method on service on the configuration object, right? So there's an authenticate method, and then there's a handler that you can wire up, right, to execute your code once it's come back. And this is what people call the event-based asynchronous pattern. And this is something that uh, modern .NET developers who are familiar with await and async don't want to have to do anymore. And in fact, if you look at most Windows 8 APIs, uh, it's not even an option because they all implement uh, await and async friendly APIs. So I'm going to undo this. So how did I get authenticate async? Well, I implemented an extension method that wraps the event-based asynchronous pattern so that it, it is a, a wait a, an async friendly. And I've got a link to a Stack Overflow post that links to the, um, the Microsoft white paper that talks about implementing this pattern. Uh, and so otherwise, if I wouldn't have implemented this authenticate async extension method to the organization service configuration class, um, the code would just not be as clean and as elegant and it, I wouldn't be able to use await and async. So let me switch back to main page here. And so again, this is one of the first things that I've done that you're going to want to do is implement a series of, where necessary, extension methods to make it very easy to use the await keyword so that you have cleaner code. And so once authenticate async is complete, the next thing we're going to need to do is new up an organization service proxy. And so we do that by passing the configuration details and the security token response. So the way this works is once authenticate async is complete, my credentials here, let me just do this real quick, have a security token response. And that's what you pass via the organization service proxy each time so that CRM knows that you're authenticated. Okay. So once we've done that, we've set up our organization service proxy, I can use CRM's entity class to basically build up an account entity. And since account only requires name, uh, then I can call organization service proxy dot create async. And again, just like authenticate, there is no create async in the sample code, right? There is a create and a create completed. And so again, I'm implementing this pattern such that we can use await to make our code cleaner, easier to debug and read, etc. Now you may be looking at this code and saying, oh, I don't want to have to use just the entity class. I want early bound types and that sort of thing. We'll get there. Uh, but for now, I want to, want to start with something very simple. So notice I come over the CRM web UI and I refresh here you'll see that there is no account named Windows 8. I'll come back to Visual Studio or Hello Win 8. So we'll just go ahead and launch this up in debug mode. Okay, so on Navigated 2 was called, we did our create configuration setup and then ultimately our login and call organization service method is called back on the UI thread. As I mentioned, we'll set up our credentials here. So I'll just hit F5. Right. Authenticate async happened. Notice now that my credentials have a security token response. This is all based on WS Trust. I'll put a breakpoint here. We're going to go ahead and new up our organization service proxy, pass it the security token response, create a new account entity, and call create async on the organization service proxy, passing it the account. So I'll hit a five there. Okay, it fired off asynchronously. We're at the end of this method. I'll hit a five. Just to kind of prove that this isn't make believe, I'll come in here and refresh. Boom. There's our hello win8. All right, so let's stop debugging. And I'm going to remove some of these. Let's comment out this code. 
And now what I want to do is I want to call retrieve multiple. And the way that this retrieve multiple works is it takes a fetch query. Now, I suspect the next thing you're doing or you're saying to yourself is, oh, I don't want to have to write fetch XML. I'm used to from .NET right, being able to write language integrated query or link. And the bad news is, is that right now with the sample, you have to use fetch XML. Or more accurately, you don't have a, a link enabled provider. So there are a couple different ways to, to create fetch XML. One way I'm sure you're familiar with is to come in here and go to advanced find. Compose your query and click download fetch XML. That's not my preferred way. Um, in my blog post, I actually have a link to explain how I use LinkPad to essentially do the same thing. Notice what I'm doing here is I'm creating a link query because I'm very familiar with composing link queries. I'm not, I don't have fetch XML burned in my brain. And then I just call this method to fetch XML. And if I actually execute this just to prove this is real, that's how I actually got the fetch XML for this code. And this is my preferred way from composing fetch XML. So while using this sample, you can't write link, link inside of your code, you can actually still use link to compose your queries and then just copy and paste the generated fetch into your code. And again, that's exactly what I did here. So then next, um, what I've done is, as you can imagine, I created this retrieve multiple async following the similar pattern where I can go ahead and make a call to CRM to get a set of records with a subset of data based on my fetch XML query. All right, so let's hit a breakpoint here. Let's go ahead and start this up in debug mode. And notice I'm gonna go ahead and just hit F5. Okay, it successfully returned some results. I can actually see that the results are there. I can look at the entities and you can see, where is it? I forget exactly where it is, which number it is, but uh, we'll see in a second that my the entity that I had uh, saved earlier is actually gonna be in this collection, right? Because we're, we're talking to CRM through the web service. But notice that I haven't set the, the data context result. Why is that? Well, because this is of type entity, right? This is a entity collection, which is a collection of records of type entity. And the problem with the entity class from the CRM SDK is that it's not data binding friendly. So if I were to do this, oops, let's go ahead and uh, stop debugging. If I were to actually set the data context of this XAML page to the result, if I look at my main page on XAML here, you'll see that I in fact have some data binding going on here. I'm basically the, inside of a list view, I'm binding name and address one underscore city. So if I just do a control F5 this time, we know because we just saw the code running that we actually get results back, but data binding is not working. And again, that's because the entity class is not data binding friendly. Okay, so what do people normally do to build data binding friendly and early bound or strongly typed entity classes? Well, you use CRM service util. And so what I have here, we have to comment this and we'll uncomment this. Oops. Notice that I have a retrieve multiple async and I pass it a count. Well, where does count come from? If I click on it, it comes from this class here called codegen.cs. It was generated using CRM use service util. And notice that I basically have two entities in here. Now, if you've used CRM service util, you've probably seen that it creates a bunch of entities. And I'm not a, a big fan of, of the code bloat um, you know, from that code generation. And so what I typically do is I use uh, Eric Poole's little filtering sample, which basically tells you how to build a less bloated code generation based on just the entities that you need. And I've got a, a link to this in the blog post for this video. So if I come over here, the way Eric's tool works and he walks through this in the blog is basically 
Uh, he uses CRM service util, but he provides this, this code writer filter, which is a, a flag on CRM service util for extensibility. And notice that I'm just filtering down to account. And so by executing this command, I generated this code. But if you just take that code as is, it's not going to compile. So let's actually see that in action. So I've, I've already executed this, uh, this command for code gen. So I'm going to replace my existing code gen file. So I'll say add existing item. And I put this over here in my downloads. Uh, bin bug. And there's that code. Yes, I want to overwrite my existing file. And again, this is only those, those two entities. But what you'll notice, the first thing you'll notice is that this tries to implement I notify property changing. Well, I know notify property changing doesn't exist in the .NET profile for Windows Store apps. So I'm going to have to delete this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to find uh, or delete the uh, event for I for property changing event handler. So let's go ahead and clean that up. And then finally, oops, and then I'm going to have to delete uh, on property changing. So those are the three things you're going to have to do one by one. And then finally, what I do is I just come in here and for all the instances of this dot on property changing left parens double quotes I go ahead and replace that with a comment so if I click replace all 110 occurrences were replaced and now this code file will actually compile so if I right click and I say build build succeeded so that's how you um, use CRM service util with a little bit of manual cleanup to get this working with the Windows Store app. All right, so let's go back to mainpage.saml.cs. So now I've got retrieved multiple async, and all I'm doing is basically getting that entity collection and putting it, putting the entities in that entity collection into a, an as a observable collection. All right, and so basically what we get back is an observable collection of T where T is of type account. And that gives us a data binding friendly result. So this time, I'm not even gonna step through the code, I'm just gonna do a control F5 here. The app launches, we authenticate to the service, or more accurately, we authenticate to Windows Azure Active Directory. Then we pass the token each in each call to the service. And there's my hello win8 that we created earlier and the rest of my account entities. All right, so in summary, we showed you the most fundamental hello world connecting to my Office 365 trial instance of Dynamic CRM here, which of course uses claims-based authentication through Windows Azure Active Directory. I showed you how to use the authentication credentials to call authenticate through an authenticate async wrapper via an extension method, so we are await friendly new up a service proxy, passing the, the security token in. And of course, this is where you would want to serialize the security token response to local storage if you wanted to allow the user to shut down this app, load it back up, and then check local storage uh, if you've got a security token response serialized, deserialize it or rehydrate it, and pass it off. Showed you how we can use the, the base entity class showed you how we can compose a fetch expression using fetch XML, either using advanced find or link pad down here. Then I showed you retrieving multiple, and ultimately what you really want to do is retrieve multiple and get back an early bound entity class based on code generation using CRM service util. So we showed you how to do that, which then allows you to have a very data binding friendly, friendly collection of entities for your Windows 8 user interface. So hopefully these little tips and tricks and missing pieces from the sample from the CRM team's blog post help you get started a little faster 
and allow you to be more productive building your Windows 8 Windows Store app on top of Dynamic CRM.